ready. Hello, welcome. My name is Whitney Lee. I'm a developer advocate and I'm here with Joachim. Joachim, will you introduce yourself, please? I'm Joachim. I'm a, a software engineering manager at Microsoft, and I'm also a maintainer of this uh, Headland project that we're going to be talking about. Yes, Joachim and I just had an hour and a half long conversation where we filled up this board. It started as an empty board. And Joachim taught me about Headlamp. A few hours ago, I didn't know anything about Headlamp. And now I feel like I know rather a lot. So thank you for that. But for those of you who don't have that much time, we're going to make this recap resource. So to get started, Joachim, let's give context to Headlamp. So Headlamp is a UI for Kubernetes. But what were UIs for Kubernetes like before Headlamp that caused Headlamp to get created? Yeah, so back then we were talking about 2019. Back then there were uh, already some uh, UIs uh, for Kubernetes in different shapes and forms. Uh, some are text UIs, some are graphical UIs. I was at this company called uh, Kinfolk at the time, and uh, this company had a its own uh, Kubernetes flavor. They needed a UI. We started looking into what was out there. Uh, they need a, a graphical UI, in fact. So uh, yeah, we started looking into that and we had specific needs. We didn't want to uh, fork a project that we had to maintain. Uh, we wanted to hopefully extend them. Uh, some projects were web uh, only, some others were desktop only. And we wanted one that was percentile enough that we could make both types of users happy. So in the end, we decided, okay, let's, let's, let's do that. That seems to be missing. Let's make uh, a UI for Kubernetes that you can use in the web and in the desktop, however you want, that uh, shows you a great user experience and that you can extend uh, by using plug. So you don't have to keep modifying. I think we got some foreshadowing there as part of the as to what's coming with Headlamp as part of that answer, which I like. So to summarize, Kubernetes UI tools were focused and they were difficult to customize if you didn't want to use it in the way that they wanted you to use it. To give even more context to this conversation, we talked about UIs for Kubernetes generally. Like, what is a UI for Kubernetes? A UI for Kubernetes is, of course, just a, a way for users to use Kubernetes. Uh, in this case, there are several types of UIs, and uh, the most common one that uh, people use is kubectl or kubectl or control. Or whatever people want to call it, that's a command line interface. So yes, that's that's what it represents. Just a way to use Kubernetes. And then you taught me too that Kubernetes UIs tend to fall under one of two umbrellas: either generic UIs or application-focused UIs. So what does it mean for a Kubernetes UI to be a generic UI? These are two categories that I that I thought of. Maybe there are others, but uh, generic UIs in this case, I like to think of it as uh, something that, that shows you the, the generic information from uh, the cluster, just the way that kubectl does. Uh, we're talking about this, the you know just the information, not the not the actual uh, interface or way of of showing it. So you know we're talking about uh, listing resources, seeing the details of one resource, maybe editing that resource. And when I say resource, these are of course you know workloads like pods, deployments, stuff like that. All the things that are very specific to uh, Kubernetes itself. So a cluster level information. And then yes. application focused UIs, how does that differ? You tell me there are two kinds of those too. In this case, that would be like, okay, instead of showing you all the things or the info that, that, that is related to Kubernetes itself, what I want to do is to show you uh, information related to the applications that we are running on Kubernetes. Maybe you have, um, I don't know, 10 applications, WordPress, whatever running. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you why that has to do with that. Maybe you stop this application from running, maybe restart it. Another kind of, of this uh, application UI would be something that, that is very focused on your own application. Your own application can even be something in Kubernetes itself. Maybe you have your own delivery platform using custom resources. You want something that users would be like, okay, instead of editing the YAML and listing the custom resources and finding out which ones are from my delivery platform, maybe I do a specific UI that just focuses on this, allows you to click a button instead of editing the YAML, 
allows you to to just quickly see the the list of, of applications you got running from the, the that are represented from the the custom resources instead of having to search through a, a list. So the your application focused UI might be focused on a single application, or it might be focused on lots of applications and how they interact with each other. So now with all of that context, let's finally get into what is Headlamp. Let's define Headlamp. Headlamp uh, is a graphical UI for Kubernetes. It tries to give you, uh, I'm, <laughs> I hope we, we, we deliver on that, but it tries to give you the best uh, user experience. It's built on top of a, a shared and extensible uh, platform. Yeah. To kick it off, you first went into how there are two components of Headlamp. Do you want to talk about that? Initially, we had Headlamp, which uh, gave you the or showed you the UI for the uh, Kubernetes uh, resources. So it lists all the all the resources in your cluster. It allows you to go deeper into one of them to see all the, those details, related pods. Allows you to exec into a pod, for example, to see the logs and all of that. Then we started thinking, okay, we we want more uh, tailored UI uh, for users uh, that would benefit from, for example, seeing metrics over time. Prometheus is a way to do that. So we arrive at how can we make sure that we have a platform that is uh, generic enough for most users, but also opinionated when we want it to be opinionated. And that's uh, the, those are the two concepts. The generic one is headlamp base. Then on top of it, we have that headlamp base plus a couple of plugins. That's headlamp itself. And currently, these two plugins that we ship are the app catalog, which allows you to list uh, and install Helm charts or manage Helm charts from there and the Prometheus one, which will show you the metrics over time. So to get started, you can get started with Headlamp Base, where it's, it's just the base and nothing more. Or you could do regular Headlamp, which has two very popular plugins, the App Catalog and Prometheus. Of course, the Headlamp is the one that, that we, when we build it, we, you have, we have that as a release that you can install. The Headlamp Base is more like, okay, if you get the code right now and you don't add any, any of the plugins that we are we are adding, that's the headlamp base. Okay. So in terms of coming back to these different UIs for Kubernetes, headlamp is a generic UI. Headlamp shows the cluster focused information, but you can extend headlamp to make it more app focused and you can do so focus on a single app or focus on app, how apps interact with each other. You accomplish that extensibility with plugins. Yes. So what is a headlamp plugin? You know, conceptually is the is the way that you can extend headlamp without modifying mm -hmm. actually the, its source code. It's a code that you write outside of, of headlamp that will be used to modify headlamp itself. Since headlamp has a backend and the frontend, what we're talking about here, and you know, we uh, kind of emphasize that it's a graphical UI. What we're talking about is a plugin that modifies the UI or uh, in, in another word, the frontend. So sometimes we also call it uh, frontend plugins. Um, and that's what plugins are. And then plugins can come from many sources, like plugins might be created and maintained by Headlamp itself, like in the case of the Headlamp install that already has a couple plugins, but users can also make their own plugins. So what's an example of when a user might build their own plugin? The goal uh, was always to have a base uh, that, that users can, uh, you know, adapt and extend. So uh, a common use case is, for example, uh, a company or an individual, I guess, that uh, goes and, and says, OK, I would like to show you the, your cluster or, or, or the cluster that we have. But I would also uh, like to show you a couple of options, maybe a feedback form. Let's go with an example. I have a feedback okay. form for people that are using my cluster. And uh -huh. I want to for them to give me feedback and to select some of the pods that I don't know, something like that. If you want to do that, of course, uh, you also want to go and manage your, uh, your your cluster. That's what you're giving. And then you are mm -hmm. giving something on top of that, which is the feedback form in this example. So you create your own plugin and then you, you would give that to your users. Use my solution. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you don't have to call it headlamp, but it's, it's like uh, my UI for my cluster. And that's like yeah. basically what headlamp gives you, plus this nice feedback form uh, that will integrate for the information and uh, stuff like that. So one thing you taught me is that plugins can happen at a couple of levels. So if you have a distribution of headlamp that's meant to go to your entire organization and you want everyone in your org to have certain plugins, you can bundle your plugins with your headlamp distribution. 
or if you're a user ha interacting with one's your own single personal version of headlamp and you want to add plugins that affect your user experience you can do it at that level too these are uh two concepts on, on how headlamp is used right when you deploy headlamp for users because you are a company for example that has its own uh users managing their uh the cluster operations and you want uh them to use a ui again with uh, some modifications on top you want them to use this version of of the ui that you are shipping for them that you are managing for them and that has uh these extra capabilities that you created for example as plugins for them you don't want them to go and say oh yes but uh and now i actually want to install this plugin that maybe shows me uh, this extra uh, thing that's usually not the case when you when you when you deploy uh, in the web for your uh, for your users uh, like that so in that case like you were saying you are responsible to say here's the final here's the final uh you know application it's uh, it's headlamp and it has some plugins the user won't even notice what part of the ui is is the plugin this is the the package solution that they get as users the other case is if you are a headlamp user as an individual and you installed it in your machine, right? You did not access it because it was deployed by someone else. You just downloaded it, installed it. In that case, you are in control, right? You don't have anyone telling you, here's the UX that you should uh, use. In that case, uh, maybe you want to, uh, maybe it would be nice for you to use certain tools that are delivered through uh, pl as plugins in Headlamp uh, that you can just quickly uh, install and use. So between like, build your own plugins versus like pre-made plugins between the two different levels plugins can happen. I'm really getting a picture of how wildly customizable Headlamp is as a UI, like a base, and then you can really make your own experience on top, which is super cool. So by default, is Headlamp able to discover what plugins are available? So by default, uh, Headlamp does not really uh, know uh of any applications that are published in the web for example uh -huh. and there's nothing in it that will search for those uh plugins and and that's also because uh, well one uh that's that would not be desirable for everybody right in, in uh -huh. the case that we were talking about if you deploy headlamp in the web for your own internal users and suddenly they start seeing a bunch of plugins in there maybe that's not desirable the other reason is that so far we've been focused on that specific case of okay if you want if you create a uh, headlamp plugins that's because you're offering your own experience and if you are offering uh -huh. your own experience then of course you have to bundle headlamp with your own plugins and ship it to whoever you want to ship it however you want to ship it maybe it's a desktop application maybe it's web but that's up to you and now we enter the the other case how do we tie these two words would there be a desire for some users to actually have uh you know a list of plugins that they can choose from without having to rebuild headland so by default there are no you can't discover plugins but yeah. if you do want to be able to there is a mechanism to be able to make plugins discoverable what we've done is that uh you know we needed a place for plugins to be listed uh for everybody a place that aggregates plugins from different uh, uh, origins or, or vendors or whatever you want to call it. This is also a problem that, for example, help charts had. And the solution uh, for this case is, uh, has been uh, Artifact Hub. So mm -hmm. we have our own uh, headlamp plugin format in Artifact Hub. What this means is that right now you can uh, build your own plugin, uh, reference to it from uh, Artifact Hub. And then, uh, yes, Artifact Hub has an API that uh, people can use to discover those plugins. What's missing uh, now, if we have this already, is the UI part. And that's where the, the plugin catalog plugin comes. So, <laughs> so we want users, uh, specifically desktop users, because we talk about those are the ones that are in control of their own uh, headlamp installation. We want them to go and be able to see a list of plugins install the ones that they want uh you know keep them up to date change the settings of a plugin stuff like that and we offer this not in headlamp itself but in a new plugin that is uh not yet uh ready but almost and th th this one is called plugin catalog plug kind of highlights the philosophy that okay uh you know this specific use case should not be part of the core because you don't want everybody uh, every single user to be installing plugins so what we, what do we do we make it part of a plugin itself so now we have yeah. a plugin that installs plugins. And if you disable <laughs> that plugin, you don't have any way to install plugins. Uh, and if you do not ship that plugin, you don't have any way to install plugins. That's the separation of, of things here. Something we've said peripherally a few times that I'm not going to say directly is Headlamp has 
a web version and a desktop version. And plugins can be for one or for the other or for both. What's the experience of writing your own plugins? How does Headlamp help with that? We have uh, a Headlamp plugin um, uh, tool. You know, that that's a JavaScript tool. If you, if you come from the JavaScript world, that's an NPM package. It allows you to quickly bootstrap uh, a, a plugin. Basically, you can name it and then you get your first version of a plugin. And then uh, when, when you develop that plugin, we have, of course, uh, APIs to do the actually uh, the actual changes in the UI, but we also have uh, uh, other parts of the API that uh, gives you more contextual information. Like we have the, the parts that will be like, okay, I want to list all the pods uh, in the in cluster A or B or whatever. But we also have something like, am I running in as a desktop application or am I or am I not a desktop application? Mm -hmm. So so inside the plugin itself, you can you can make a decision to say, I don't want to show anything if I'm uh, not running as 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 a desktop. Or vice versa. That's something that we offer plugins, uh, and of course, in Headlamp itself, the version that we ship with plugins, uh, the the web version, uh, ships with different plugins from the desktop version because some plugins are just not meant to be, uh, you know, for one or the other platforms. Just a couple more questions. Does Headlamp need any special permissions to be installed and run? No. So uh, some uh, when you deploy something related to to the cluster and specifically in cluster in Kubernetes, the philosophy for Headlamp is that in itself it doesn't really need uh, permissions. We don't be like, okay, we need access to listing the pods in this specific uh, namespace, or we need to be able to add it or exec into a pod. That's not expected at all, uh, because what we do is that we use what the user. Uh, has as permissions so you know through role-based access control we try to guess okay this user that is using headlamp right now can they delete this pod uh, uh -huh. no. so we don't show the delete but on one hand you don't need the permissions and on top of that the ui uh, in order to make sense of this the ui tries to adapt to what you actually can do as a user that's super cool that adaptable ui so if you can't delete a resource you don't even have the ability to option the button to delete the resource my final question is about what if I want to get my hands dirty, get started, maybe do a demo, contribute to the community. Where do I go from here? An obvious place is our website, headlamp.dev. From there, you can uh, get an overview of the project. Uh, you can also uh, access you know, the, the GitHub repo from there and also Slack. Uh, we have, uh, I think, a healthy uh, community in uh, Slack, so you can join it. We are very friend friendly people uh, most of the days, and uh, <laughs> and we, you know, we have people that come and ask questions. We have people from companies and uh, and ask for help because they're you know, starting their own, uh, you know, uh, UI for Kubernetes based on Headlamp, and uh, it's a very nice position to be in uh, where we interact with the with the users. Yeah, and if you if you're really hands on and you want to jump straight straight into the code, you, we also have the all the documentation is uh, is linked from the website. All those source code and everything is all is all public so go crazy with it this has been wonderful thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise i'm really excited about headlamp i can't wait to try it out is there anything you'd like to say in closing it was really nice to to also be here and uh, to share uh, this project and the information of, of this project with you and uh yeah i hope that people also enjoy watching thank you everyone for watching goodbye Bye.